Hello, hi, hi everyone. Welcome to a new edition of Glasgow Short Film Festival and Short Waves uh, Online uh, 2020 uh, edition. Before I hand over to the ever awesome uh, Doris Bauer, who will be chairing the panel today, I will briefly introduce you to uh, the Creative Europe Media Program. Uh, my name is Alberto Valverde, and I work at the Creative Europe desk in the UK. The desk is part of a network of advice offices across Europe. Uh, and it's our job to encourage participation in the European Union's Creative Europe Media Program. Since 2014, Creative Europe channeled 1.46 billion euros to support Europe's culture and creative sectors. Looking at this domestically from a UK point of view, since 2014, we channeled 90 million euros uh, that went to 376 UK based organizations. The Creative Europe Desk UK and Poland are very proud to be supporting this, this year's edition of, of the industry sessions of Glasgow Short Film Festival and Short Waves. And for those listening from across Europe, I strongly encourage you to reach uh, your closest desk, the desk in your country, and check some of the different funding schemes available through Creative Europe. As some of you might know also, uh, earlier this year, UK decided to stop participating in the future program. So in December, we will stop uh, participating in, in the media program. And that will change a little bit the relationship between Europe and the UK. Uh, and that's why uh, I think that collaborations like this one that we're seeing this year between Glasgow and Poznan, uh, it's even more important these days, these international collaborations. Our relationship will change, but not all access is lost. And it's not the end of the world. Co-production between European countries and, and the UK will continue and it's not affected by UK living uh, Creative Europe. Uh, and in the same way, uh, I, will, I, I will highlight uh, all those opportunities uh, behind or beyond the Creative Europe umbrella, which are the festivals, training programs, film labs, markets, uh, which is really the backbone of, of, of the program. Uh, if you are an emerging writer, director, producer, editor, animator, I would really like you to be aware of those and I think the team or myself will be popping a, a couple of useful links into the chat for you. It's a list of very clear uh, distributed courses focused on script development, post-production, animation, so hope that helps. And again looking for those listening from, from, from the UK uh, uh, with that UK perspective when, when the air becomes so thick in here I guess the natural response for a young filmmaker is to go out and get some fresh air and mix and mingle with uh, directors from other countries, with perspectives that are different than yours, uh, uh, with like-minded minds, uh, directors, or if possible, even better with radically different directors. So, so really, really strongly, uh, strongly encourage you all to, to in Europe to go and check out those those courses, those trainings. I again, the, the links will be shared in the chat. Uh, I would particularly love to see, obviously, a, a wave of Scottish writers applying to scriptwriting workshops like Torino Film Love, Sources, Less Is More, 
producers applying to ACE, EAVE, screen leaders, now that the UK is leaving, it would be awesome to see a, a wave of Scottish uh, selected uh, filmmakers for those. Almost all of these trainings and labs are keeping 20% of their space for non-EU professionals. So that door remains open uh, for UK professionals. For the rest of you listening from across Europe, it's even better. It's, uh, your chances are higher. Uh, they all have proven incredibly successful in building a network of contacts for participants. And if you have any queries or you're interested in a specific one, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I think my contact details are shared as well in the chat. Uh, so that's that's me, really. I have a huge respect for the for this ace-looking uh, panel of speakers uh, and the job they're doing in Bogota, in Vienna, in Imeyen, Lithuania, uh, Bali. Uh, I really look forward to, to hear big, bold ideas, small, specific uh, steps towards festival collaboration. And I genuinely think that the film industry could learn a, a hell of a lot of uh, lessons from the dynamics I see in the short film and animation families, where it feels like there is a, a stronger sense of a global community and collaboration. Uh, that's all from me. I, I let you panelist, uh, panelists destroy my positive arguments on global goodwill and festival collaboration with some gloomy perspectives on festival competition, premieres clashing, geo-blocking, etc. Et Thank you everyone for listening and I wish you a really a very happy festival from wherever you're listening us. Uh, Toris, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Alberto. Thanks. Um, hello and welcome uh, to this industry talk, uh, Festival Cooperation in a Time of Crisis. My name is Doris Bauer. I'm festival director at Vienna Shorts and your host for this talk. Um, this event itself is a result of cooperation between Glasgow Short Film Festival and the Short Waves Festival. So I would like to welcome the audience of both festivals in Scotland and in Poland and or uh, from, from wherever you're watching us. Um, I may introduce um, our participants of this discussion today. Please, uh, dear panelists, uh, just say a few words about you and your organization. We'll start with uh, Francisca Brihadi, Program Director Minikino, Indonesia. Welcome, Chica. Hi, Doris. Thank you. Um, well, in short, I'm going to um, open the festival in two weeks' time. Uh, it's going to be in Bali, 4 to 12 of September. I'm sorry I cannot invite any of you here, but yeah, I'm really happy to, to be seeing uh, everyone here and to see actually most of the film festivals, the one that I have never got a chance to attend, but seeing the, their selection, I think, yeah, it's wonderful. So I'm um, all ears, I must say. I think that's all. Thank you, Chica. The next one is Felipe Montoya, Chief of Programming Bogota Short Film Festival's Bogo Shorts in Colombia. Welcome, Felipe. Thank you, Doris, and, and thanks for Short Waves and, and Glasgow Shorts for having me. Uh, it's great to see you here. Uh, well, Bogo Shorts is going into the 18th edition that is going to be uh, celebrated hopefully in December. We are still not sure how the situation is going to be by then, but we are planning for multiple possibilities of, of how to celebrate this uh, short film party for, for the Latin American and, and, and Colombian industry. And, and yeah, well, Bobo Shorts has international and national competition, also fantasy section, virtual reality, uh, many other out of competition sections, and also uh, a bow up. Uh, the Bogo Shorts Film Market, which is the, the only uh, short film focused market in, in Latin America and is especially aimed to highlight uh, productions from this region uh, with many industry activities and, and, and many more in the city of Bogota. I, I hope we, we can meet again in Colombia in, in, in years to come, but for now, I, I just I am just, happy to share this panel with you. Thank you. Um, our next panelist I want to introduce to you is Rimante Dogelaite, Managing Director of Lithuanian Shorts, and she's also organizing the Vilnius International Short Film Festival in Lithuania. Welcome, Rimante. Rimante, the sound? 
Welcome, everybody. Uh, yeah, thank you, Dari, for presenting me. And it's a great pleasure to be with you all here today. Uh, yeah, so I'm one of co-founder of Lithuanian short film agents, Lithuanian Shorts. And also I run Business International Short Film Festival, which will happen hopefully uh, in the mid of uh, January, uh, the beginning of uh, 2021. And it will be 14th edition. And yeah, looking forward to, to our talk today. Thank you. And uh, Niels Ketela, Scotiabank International Short Film Festival, Netherlands. Welcome, Niels. Thank you, Doris. Uh, also, thank you all for uh, having me in this panel. Um, good job to uh, Glasgow and Shortwaves. Um, I've seen uh, the start of your festivals. It looks very promising. At least I saw it online because as most of us, I have to still uh, remain at home and work from home. Um, and yeah, I'm uh, Niels. I'm the program director of uh, Go Short, International Short Film Festival in Nijmegen in the Netherlands. And uh, our 12th edition was planned to take place in April this year. Uh, unfortunately, as we all know, that couldn't take place. Um, so we uh, tried to work as hard as possible to uh, make a, a switch to an online festival, which we ran from uh, mid of April to uh, mid of May, which was uh, quite an experiment, but we were very happy that it, uh, how it uh, worked out. Uh, and now, like all of you, we are preparing our next edition, which will hopefully take place again next year in April. Um, and hopefully, or yeah, we'll see in what kind of form, but uh, hopefully we can go again with uh, a physical festival. Thanks uh, uh, for this uh, short introduction. Um, dear audience, if you have any questions uh, for our panelists, please use the chat box. Um, and I will hand the questions over to them. Okay, so um, I'm very happy that we have this uh, very international panel here. And uh, I guess this is only possible because of the online streaming. Um, this brings me to my first issue I want to discuss with you. At the moment, uh, film festivals are more and more limited to the virtual space uh, by this pandemic. So one is no longer bound to one place. It seems there are uh, unlimited possibilities of uh, reaching an audience, but also for festival cooperations in general. So Felipe, I want to start with you. You're in Colombia. What do you think? Uh, do festivals really become international noticeable events through this dissolution of space? And how does that influence our attitude towards audience participation and also festival cooperation? What do you think? Oh, wow. Well, I should start by saying that, well, uh, what, what you are asking made me think of how, how, how big could uh, be the audience for our festivals now being online and, uh, and, and, and the experience that I've had here in Colombia from the, the, the festivals that, that happened in the United States and Europe which are the, the ones that had, have actually happened because here in Latin America, only a few have happened online. Um, I think in, in I mean, I've, I have binge watched a lot of uh, film festivals online just because I'm part of the industry and I'm very interested to, to watch as many short films as I want. But I'm not sure that the the general audience has discovered more uh, possibilities of uh, uh, consuming cultural content online out of what they already know out of what they already used to see in uh, bod platforms and sorts of i mean I, I i don't know if a lot of people heard about go short online here in colombia or being a shorts maybe part of the industry but i think it would be i mean it it, it is a possibility it is a possibility to 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 access these these festivals depending on on the geo blocking and, and and stuff but it, it it's always going to be an issue to do the right marketing and communication to actually get to that audience uh, to a bigger audience so i think it's it's right if 
if if we focus on our online community built in social networks and stuff uh, in the in the local community that already know us as as, as festivals and of course with uh, the regulations for film distribution we have to agree to some sort of limitation for the screening of films so so they can have a circuit in other countries countries and stuff but i think getting to a bigger audience uh, not only depends on just being online but on doing the uh, particular marketing to get into those uh, audiences uh, around the world thank you um Rimante, what do you think? Um, getting the audiences is the one thing we want to discuss, but also festival corporations in general. Um, is, is there a possibility to reach other festivals or to cooperate better or more internationally? What mm -hmm. do you think? Well, I think uh, uh, this week example, when we have two important short film festivals happening at the same time, Short Waves and Glasgow, it's a very good example how you can collaborate together and, for example, having even industry events together at the same time. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, when it's uh, such a situation as it is now, it's, it's like really, really important to collaborate. And I think if, if, if we will have the same situation, like upcoming half a year or even next year, uh, we'll have even closer um, collaborations talking about you know even even about planning the festivals about its timing the dates you know like common industry events i think that uh, it's very important uh, to think about this and um, yeah in general i think like film festival cannot stand alone and soul you know it's like to collaborate with other colleagues it's like really essential and uh, yeah i couldn't imagine our festival for example uh, being alone without any partners abroad, you know, when you can bring uh, different practices, um, programs for other from other film festivals. I mean, that's really important and essential for such a small industry as short film industry. Chika, you and your festival are in Indonesia, Bali. Um, there is there is also another theory uh, that the world has become even smaller due to, to the restrictions caused by the pandemic. We can travel that easily from one festival to the other anymore. We are required to keep distance. Uh, what does uh, that make cooperation even more uh, difficult? Or what do you think? Um, what are your experiences um, with cooperation in the current times, maybe, also? Mm trying to be optimist. <laughs> um, I was saying to you in our really, really uh, beginning, uh, our first chat, uh, Doris was contact, uh, Doris uh, called me and we were talking. I, I'm seeing this actually, trying to be optimist again. Like for example, when film festivals, in film festivals, we meet each other and then we have a drink. And then we'll keep each other's name card and it stacks in our table. Uh, we might reach out the one that we have really good chat in person. And then we email them and then we go back and forth and we do a collaboration. I was saying to Doris that um, in this time where the whole world is having the same depression, we're having the same challenge. Um, when it used to be really different challenge between film festivals in Europe and film festivals in Asia or Southeast Asia, now it's becoming one challenge and we're having the same problem. So at the end of the day, those name cards that we have, we reach out, we get connected to probably social media, and then we like each other's food in quarantine or bread in quarantine, and then we, and then we chat in a more intimate and personal way actually even. So then actually it opened up to even more collaboration um, and I must say people might not be more open in the back days uh, where there's no problem of quarantine nowadays people make their time when you reach out and ask can we meet online then people will just say yes and what can we do to help each other like the openness um, is really I think uh, a big difference. 
So I will say I agree, of course, with what Rimante says. No film festival can stand alone. And actually, this online meetings and online reaching out, regardless the time zone difference, I think it opens up to something. Uh, Niels, uh, as a European festival, uh, what do you think are the chances or difficulties uh, regarding festival corporations in the current uh, crisis times? Uh, I think it, I, I, I do agree with uh, what uh, has been said before. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it, 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 it offers some challenges because going uh, transferring a festival to an online environment um, might create some competition with already existing uh, structures of VOD platforms, like Philippe said. Um, but it also creates a lot of opportunities. And um, it. I think a lot of, I, in the years before, I think we heard a lot of people already saying that they wanted to change uh, the, the, the structures of, of flying around all the time and, and meeting each other in festivals and um, sometimes not very fruitful or, or efficient. Um, that now, this situation, uh, how shit it, it might be, uh, it also creates, maybe it, it forces us to rethink our, our, our former um, uh, habits. And um, I think it creates some opportunities to, to really uh, yeah, do some new things like we are doing now. And I think this will remain and this will stick in the future, even though we will uh, uh, even if the, the virus and the threat will will vanish, I think a lot of these new structures that we have forced have been forced to uh, 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 how do you say that uh, research and, and try out in this time. I think they will remain, um, and I think it, it it's in line with with some trends that we were seeing in in the past few years. So yeah. I think it's it, it offers a lot of uh, new opportunities and new new structures. Uh, okay, so let's talk about uh, these new opportunities you mentioned, Niels, and uh, I don't know, rethinking habits. Uh, in this new online world, um, what is the position of cooperation, do you think? Uh, and how will it change? And is there also, do you see a tendency tendency of, I don't know, cannibalizing each other? Like uh, it was mentioned already that uh, the two festivals now are on the, in the same time. So how can you work together? Or is there also this fear of um, cannibalizing each other? What do you think, Niels? Um, I, I mean, I, I, I understand what you're saying, that it, it feels like a threat. But um, if we separate the two things of um, um, film programming, which is mainly uh, uh, aimed at a local audience or at least a national audience um, and an uh, industry program which is which has already and always been more aimed at an international uh, audience um, I think it can create a bit more of a uh, continuous structure I mean this is very optimistic again but um, it, yeah I, th I think uh, it, it in, in the best possible way, it can only create more uh, more value. And I, I don't think, I mean, if, if the festivals do collab collaborate more and it doesn't have to be a worldwide network because that will be practically impossible. But for some networks to form and for some collaborations to, to, uh, to form and to, to continue throughout the year and throughout the years to come, um, I think this can only benefit and profit for the entire industry. Um, yeah, so maybe let's talk about the type of festival cooperation, collaborations you all uh, have. Um, yeah, what are the uh, areas of your cooperation? I mean, and which ones? Uh, yeah, have you have you realized already? For example, on the program program level, or the, like Niels mentioned, industry level, or marketing level. What are your experiences with um, collaborations with other festivals? Who wants to start? 
Felipe, maybe? <laughs> okay. Um, well, in our experience, we've um, we have um, we have developed some uh, strategies that every year get us in touch with festivals around the world. Um, in the during the festival, we have some uh, sections in the program that usually uh, get. Uh, are made in partnership with some festivals. One section is Festivaleando, which means which means festival going, that every year we have like a, a focus festival that is usually, of course, a short film festival. Uh, and also the world tour section that is uh, that that has a, a country focus and sometimes always also a city focus. We uh, usually make it with a, a, in partnership with a festival. And during the year, we have something called the Bogo Shorts Movement that, that is um, uh, keeping the activity of the festival alive during the year. And the Bogo Shorts Movement aims to promote Colombian short film around the world. So we also have a, a world tour that is taking Colombian short films around the world uh, to, to short film festivals or, 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 or other, other festivals. And uh, also a, a Colombian route that is going with our selection, our, our, uh, our competition from the last year to other festivals uh, around the world, uh, around Colombia. But uh, in last year, we, um, in, the, in the past few years, we had a section in our market called Bosses, called Voices, uh, that was aimed to get together first uh, sh fe festivals in Colombia uh, focused on uh, student films, uh, like university film festivals. Uh, and then last year it was for short film festivals. So, so these activities were networking activities uh, with the aim of creating the base of, of a, 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 a a network for these film festivals to approach better the situation of how film festivals work in Colombia, because there are some challenges in, in funding, in getting Okay, it seems Felipe lost connection. Um, okay, Rimante, you, maybe you want to uh, tell us in a bit about... Audience. Ah, no, he's here again. Sorry, Felipe. Sorry, I I don't know where I don't know where you lost me, and as soon as I finish, I will change the network. But it, it was it was just uh, saying that this activity voices that was creating a network for the festivals was saying to 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 prepare uh, the festivals for the challenges of of how film festivals. Okay, I think we lost him again. Uh, so. Maybe he will change his network first and we talk to him uh, later again. Rimante, maybe you want to share uh, some uh, collaborations you do uh, in your work and your experiences with other festivals, please. Uh, yes, yeah, so with our uh, short film festival, uh, basically we do the collaboration on all you mentioned the levels like industry marketing and programming. So for for example, we have a long-term collaboration with uh, such um, festivals as uh, Clermont Ferrand, Annecy Film Festivals. Uh, every year they uh, provide us uh, short film programs for kids. Uh, then every year we usually have new collaborations um, regarding the programming. Uh, but for example, this year we had uh, a uh, special horror short film festival, which was programmed programmed by Horro uh, and fantasy film festival Hapsalo. Uh, for example, two years ago we had the um, great collaboration with uh, Uppsala short film festival, and they programmed us um, film film program uh, about fake news. So it's a really nice collaborations, uh, which also uh, brings as you know like an overview about um, about different cultures about uh, different film festivals uh, in other film um, um, colleagues uh, let's say circuit uh, 
Uh, then uh, we had um, really nice, every year actually, we have a like, long-term partnership in marketing with our um, Baltic uh, partners. And uh, yeah, so basically they really help us uh, on the regional level promote our film festival, not only film festival, but all other industry events uh, such as like Baltic Pitching Forum and we have also Baltic Short Residency. So it's like really, really nice established long-term uh, collaboration with them, uh, with the Baltic Short Film Festivals. And then, for example, industry part in our film festival is also very much attached to some other industry events in Europe. For example, this year we had collaboration with the uh, La Garimba Short Film Festival and uh, they did a workshop in Vilnius. So, yeah, it's always nice, you know, to have uh, some colleagues, uh, passionate colleagues who could uh, provide us, you know, content and also advice. Um, also was thinking about um, collaboration in general be be before this industry talk uh, and was thinking that, you know, it's not only um, about putting the logo of, uh, of uh, partners, uh, festivals in your catalog. It's also about, you know, your colleagues in different events when you can advise, discuss, you know, ask the questions, uh, how they do in their events. So, yeah, that's our practice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Niels, you want to share uh, your experiences with us, please? Yeah, I think uh, there's, uh, uh, we, we also have many collaborations um, on program levels. There are some uh, program exchanges. Um, and I think with when it concerns international festivals, it's, uh, uh, there's always, uh, we, we try to uh, use the ex expertise of other festivals, like uh, Philippe also mentioned, you are looking at uh, specific genre festivals or um, typical programs or uh, a way of working that uh, other festivals are doing. Um, and on a national level, for example, we collaborate also with uh, uh, on a, a single program, which happens every year around the uh, European Short Film Day in December. And then it has uh, also uh, a great marketing value because then we collaborate with other festivals to, to reach as much, as much uh, people as we can within the Netherlands because this is a, uh, a project which is running in cinemas all over the country. Uh, so then we need some more power to reach a big audience. Um, and well, also we work with uh, a few networks, with Doris, we are uh, uh, joined in a network with also Oberhausen and Shortwaves, uh, which is based on the use of uh, FilmChief, which is also uh, which is also the basis of the VOD or the screening platform that we used for our online festival, um, and which is also used by Glasgow and Shortwaves for obvious reasons. Um, and I think, um, yeah, this is more of a profound collaboration, which is which goes a lot deeper than just uh, program exchange or advertisement exchange for uh, for catalogs, because it's uh, it goes way more about uh, uh, different levels of training, uh, industry programming, but also program uh, just uh, uh, film programming. Um, and this, and this network was formed, I think, because we really uh, admire and respect each other's identities and we want to learn from each other and, and the programs that we could make together uh, and the, the, the activities that we could uh, initiate together, they might have, uh, they are just more of a quality level. So we're looking for a quality impulse with certain collaborations that uh, go over uh, standard exchanges. Thank you, Niels. Uh, Chica, you want to share uh, your uh, best uh, practices with us? Um, well, for mini kino uh, practice, uh, okay, just to give you an 
idea you might already know this but okay bali is already an island and we're in indonesia is uh, the biggest archipelago uh, in the world there are more than 17,000 islands uh, and more than 300 local language spoken so when we talk about uh, collaboration between uh, festivals uh, we uh, we think national regional southeast asia and international when we say national it means that these archipelago countries, we would like, we cannot really uh, put our eyes into the whole production and the whole uh, development of short films in Indonesia. So we do even a program exchange between cities in Indonesia that we do yearly. And then we have the Southeast Asia program exchange as well. Uh, it's annual. So then we keep track of where everybody's at and keep eye on new talents as well. Um, and then of course the international, we do similar like the others uh, mentioned, um, program exchange. Um, I do like the, I do like the idea that not just an idea, you've already done it, you know, sharing the cost of the platform, sharing the idea, sharing the challenge between uh, Niels and Doris, uh, I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm the passive um, audience and I enjoy the collaboration. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so more than that, also I think uh, capacity building, like skill, like workshop and artist uh, exchange uh, collaboration. Yeah. And we've been doing that since day one. Um, Mini Kino itself as organization is 18 years old. So since 2002, the collaboration uh, has started, um, but more and more these days, um, yeah, it opens up to more. And I think with this 2020 uh, situation, yeah, I, I must say, again, being optimist, it's limitless, I must say. It seems like you have uh, all the various col uh, various um, collaborations on different levels. So, what would you say? Can you already foresee which level of cooperation will get stronger in the future? I mean, you mentioned regional, local, regional, national, or international collaborations. Uh, where is where are your preferences when you are thinking of the future of you and your festival? Ooh. Okay, uh, Southeast Asia short film culture are so different than Europe or North America or South America. Uh, even in 2000, early 2000, the term short films are rarely used. They use a lot of independent films. So even they don't use the correct term, which then actually disconnect them with the network. So I must say uh, both are equally, um, equally important because uh, why do we make the network? Of course, obviously, also because we want to promote Indonesian short films and also to have Indonesian uh, filmmakers and audience also see these great films that the uh, whole world are making. So yeah, I cannot say which one will go uh, more important. I think they're both equally important. Some others, do you have some preferences or I don't know, some way or path you already um, uh, decided to go? More like focusing on the local audience or local festival partners or also on the more on the international level? What would you say? If I can, you can, you can hear me again, right? Yes, okay. So uh, we are we are focused on strengthening the, the industry for short films in Latin America uh, and also connected with the, to the language to Spain and the Ibero-American, Ibero I mean. Um, so so we, are, we are now uh, very grateful for um, um, uh, the start of our, a network of Ibero-American film festival called Red Ibero Fest that, that started because of the pandemic or during the pandemic and uh, because of the need to get to know the, the different 
difficulties that uh, festivals in Latin America have uh, compared to other other regions. So it started like like a like an invitation from the director of short shorts in Mexico, uh, and then uh, more than a hundred festivals have joined. And in Colombia, Bogo Shorts is leading the, how to connect to the to to the to to this network for for Colombian film festivals, and uh, yeah, it's it's trying to to get to know better what are uh, the, the the challenges, the opportunities, how we can work together. Because I mean the, the, the region is so big that is uh, it has particular um, it, it it takes particular effort to connect. So so there's that, and we also are, we are also looking forward to welcome in Bogo Shorts uh, some of the activities and ideas and values that the short film conference has been working on uh, mainly in Europe, but but also with a lot of festivals around the world, but we would like to bring that particularly to the Colombian uh, audience and film industry, because I think uh, the, there's work to be done uh, around how, how to take uh, short films uh, seriously as part of the industry and as part of a, 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 a commercial circuit and, 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 and also besides the artistic one. So th that's what we are focusing on right now. Uh, Neil Sarimante, you want to add something? Um... Yeah, I, I, uh, I think also, I think what Felipe says, uh, I'm not sure if, if we are, um, if there's already some signs of, 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 of big change or that we have we have not yet decided or make it made it a very specific choice in what uh, on what level we want to pursue uh, new collaborations that are related to the the crisis situation. But I think the the more international uh, large scale collaborations uh, are more um, are the more logic place to to increase and to to develop now because I think since the world has become like we said the, the world has become a little bit smaller due to uh the the internet connection and, and the fact that we are here now talking to each other with people from all around the world on a very uh simple in a simple manner actually without having to fly uh or travel for days um i think this is creating new opportunities which will be uh more interesting to 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 research and to find out in, in, in the next couple of months and years. And I think more local collaborations uh, are, for me, I think they are a little bit more difficult at this time because they are more focused at reaching an audience in uh, a cinema or in a venue. And this is, uh, well, obviously not very well possible now. So I, yeah, that's why I think it's more large scale collaborations. Thank you, uh, Rimante. You mentioned that uh, you have, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, your uh, network activities are um, focusing on the Baltics. So, mm -hmm. um, is this what you you were planning to do already, or is it uh, one, um, yeah, is it a part of this crisis as well? What would you say? Uh, well, as I mentioned, it's kind of already established, you know, collaboration. Uh, for example, from the beginning of the Baltic Pitching Forum, which was kind of uh, our event together with the Latvians and Estonians. Uh, but what I noticed uh, during this situation that uh, there is kind of like natural need uh, to advise with the colleagues, you know, uh, about uh, their experience, about, you know, their opinion, uh, how they would act, you know, in one or another situation and how they will do, for example, next month uh, with the short Riga uh, film festival or in November with Pop Shorts. So it's kind of, you know, like even stronger uh, need uh, you know, to collaborate and uh, be together. 
So I think that, um, yeah, it will remain and it will be maybe even stronger, that kind of collaboration, like maybe even on the regional level, even in like Europe, like on the European level. Uh, yeah, even this uh, network like Schroffen Conference from the beginning of the lockdown, we, we saw that, you know, we were all like kind of united, you know, and many activities were happening, you know, to kind of uh, help the filmmakers to promote the films, you know, to, to help the film festivals, which moved to online formats. So it's, I think it's kind of like new strategy of, you know, being like even like one united uh, network. I think all of the festivals here are um, members of the short film conference, uh, if I'm correct. Yes. Okay. I see. Um, yeah, the short film conference definitely is an important uh, network. Um, Niels, you mentioned already another network uh, you were part of, uh, or we are, because Vienna Shorts is also part of this network. Maybe you want to explain a bit uh, more, or also maybe it's the uh, time to talk about the media funding and uh, how money is involved in all of those uh, activities. Yeah. Um, what, what do you? What is your question exactly? Uh, to elaborate a little bit more on the network. Yeah. 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 Because what is the festival? Is this festival network working already? And what is it about? And what are the main goals? And maybe you want to share. Yeah. How is it work? How is it work? <laughs> Um, well, it's uh, we it's a collaboration, like I said, between four festivals uh, called the European Short Film Network, and um, it was formed a few years ago um, to to see if we could collaborate on some joint projects that would uh, go beyond our uh, individual festivals, and uh, uh, it was, I think. Uh, it was in anticipation also a little bit about the media change in the uh, uh, the uh, funding uh, application possibilities. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what I can tell about the network. Maybe you can add some Taurus, um, like because we and I guess some other festivals are still in anticipation of the results and it is also in a, to a certain extent uh, um, uh, how do you say that uh, uh, it depends on, on what we can do in with the network um, but yeah I, what you are asking more also is is media funding important for uh, creating collaborations? And I think, uh, of course, collaborating is not only, sometimes it can be a way to, to create efficiency or to cut some costs somewhere. Uh, you can buy a program from another festival, uh, which might be cheaper than to curate and uh, realize it all by yourself. So then, but I think that's a, a more of a, a low-key kind of collaboration, which is more a commercial one, uh, whereas the more qualitative, uh, intense collaborations, they are striving to reach a higher goal um, and a, a bigger goal than just screening one uh, short film program. Um, and this is always a, a matter of, of investment, investment of time, and therefore investment of money and sometimes also just investment of money to to build uh, certain uh, things that 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 form the network or that promote the network to the outside world uh, and this for this obviously funding is necessary and, and media funding now especially with the the new uh, application for for short film or for film networks film festival networks uh, makes this uh, uh, interesting, but somehow it always has to come from your uh, from your uh, budget of a festival. So it, yeah, I think investing in in a network is very important, uh, and this is something that we and you and all our festivals are planning to to do, obviously. Uh, yeah, talking about money. Thanks, Niels. Um, investing in um, in a network. 
Um, what do you think? Is it uh, re regarding corporations? Is it uh, do they cost more or do we all profit more from the process of working together, also financially speaking? I mean, is it possible to increase efficiency or, I don't know, to save costs or use synergy effects? Um, or is it just more work or uh, more costs also for your own uh, festival? And what are your experiences on that, Felipe? I think we talked about this a bit. Felipe, ah, can okay. you hear us? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I I think we talked about this these challenges for funding in 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 Colombia and and I think Latin America, because as as you may know, we are a very large continent, uh, so we can for example we can't travel as easily between countries. Uh, uh, flights are as expensive as going to from here to Europe. Um, the the distances are long. At least we have the language. I mean, we, we we can speak. We can all speak our mother language, and you have to agree all in speaking English. So that's a that's an advantage for us. But 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 yeah, it's difficult. And in Colombia, uh, sometimes uh, a lot of festivals depend on uh, state funding, uh, and. Uh, those that that funding is usually uh, uh, delivered and based on, on competition and, and on a and and presenting projects and who who is better and stuff like that and and um, that competition usually makes uh, the cooperation between festivals uh, in in the country at least not not very not very friendly we usually do it as as an exchange program and stuff like that but uh, whenever we can we try to invite uh, festivals to 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 Bogo shorts to to discuss what are the needs what are the, the the challenges as i already said so that's why we work on creating this this uh, section of the market to to establish a, 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 a way of 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 uh, uh, overcoming those those challenges because it's not always it's not only demanding the the, the state the government how they need uh, more money uh, for 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 the culture and the arts uh, but creating ourselves the need for them to. Uh, uh, um, get a bigger funding by uh, proposing uh, specific actions that can uh, develop more the industry around uh, short films, around animation, around documentary, around feature films and, and stuff like that. So it's not only asking for, for more money, but creating uh, uh, the, the need for that, uh, developing more the, the industry. And, and our experiences is that that uh, yes, it's it's not always easy to to agree on uh, who covers what costs or or, or whatever. Uh, it usually is more about uh, who is uh, proposing the, the the activities, the 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 content, the 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 strategies that are more relevant to the moment and to to to, to the moment and to the needs of the industry and 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 that 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 not only affect the festival itself but contribute to the development of the network in general so that in future years we can all uh, benefit from that 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 is that I was but what I'm trying to say, yeah. Thank you. Um, what do the others think? Uh, is it sometimes just more work investing in a network or uh, investing in some program corporations you have? Or, and I don't know, you get crazy some evening and you think, okay, my list is really long. I have to do a lot of things here. So it costs more for you in, yeah, like Niels mentioned, time-wise and also money-wise, or um, 
do you actually save money and time because you work together? Um, Chica, what do you think? How is this in your festival? Well, above time and money, I think the most important thing is the commitment. And it's really, I think it's a challenge to meet the right partner. I mean, you meet and, and try to collaborate with so many partners, but at the end of the day, it's to find the one that would say yes, to try to get the time and the money uh, to do like a project, whatever the project is, uh, say for Felipe to, to, to develop the industry, like who to collaborate with. So I'm, I'm very, very interested and feel really thankful that, that we are now connected with the short film conference. So per se, at least, at least we know some festivals, then we get to know more people. Even then, we don't know if we are aiming or visioning the same thing. So I will say um, collaboration, if with the right partner, will give you the time and money, as long as you get the one that are committed to the same project. <laughs> Thank you, Rimante. How does this work for you? <laughs> yeah, well, so from our experience so far, I see only advantages of being in the network. Uh, uh, so, for example, yeah, as we mentioned, uh, like it's also for cost effective side of, of you know, being in the network so that you can save money for programming, for exchanging the programs between the festivals also if we talk about marketing and promoting your events it's also it's a big uh, advantage you know be together with some partners some colleagues for example we had one online uh, panel discussion at the end of june during the um, marche du film online so short film conference helped us you know to promote that discussion you know among uh, European uh, international organizations and festivals. So it's, you know, yeah, I only see the, the big blesses of being in the network and collaborating with others. Talking about big pluses, I think you all, re all mentioned uh, this aspect of, uh, yeah, festivals as uh, support group. Uh, yeah, listening to each other, understanding, I don't know, asking, uh, about uh, some informal things, this informal exchange. Um, how important is this aspect of festival corporations, especially in times of crisis? Um, Rimante, I think you mentioned this uh, once. Maybe you want to share some thoughts about that. Uh, informal, you mean between uh, uh, between well, the festivals and uh, the festival, your festival partners, and uh, yeah, just this easy way of talking to each other yeah exactly because as, as i said it's not about only like putting like officially putting the logo of the partner in the festival's catalog it's also about you know when you can just call um, your colleague and ask you know if you have you know i don't know some subtitles for example because we're missing and we need it urgently and some kind of yeah things that um yeah it's I think that collaboration, it's like uh, we have uh, like more things uh, under like the word collaboration. It's all about, you know, yeah, talking, you know, with the, your closest um, festivals in the region. And as I said, you know, asking about uh, their experiences and, and their thoughts in this uh, time of crisis. <laughs> And uh, to all of you, the question, have you already de developed some new strategies uh, for cooperation? I don't, I don't know. It's uh, too early to tell, maybe, because it's, uh, yeah, it's, it seems like it's a really long time now, this uh, pandemic already happening. But on the other hand, uh, yeah, some, some new strategies uh, for cooperation. Maybe it's uh, too short, but maybe you have some thoughts already. Um, what are your plans? Uh, what will you do? All the your next editions are coming. Um, um, Chica, your festival is in three weeks. So, 
you do you have any plans for this edition or maybe already for the next one uh, some things you will change because of the pandemic and uh, yeah oh yeah at the moment my energy is for the next two weeks <laughs> and to make it happen and and, and finger crossed nothing major uh, go uh, bad um, I hope everything goes well. Um, new strategy for cooperation. Um, we're eager to learn. Um, Minikino, I represent Minikino to uh, be involved in the working group that the short film conference is working on to um, make the online film festival scope of ethics. So even though we feel the need of the local audience are not going into online, but instead keeping the cinema experience, the cinema culture, the exchanges, the real physical and social uh, uh, happening. Even though we are going to do that and we are going to strive to do that, but we think it's equally important to understand what is this about and how if we would someday uh, have the chance to do it, how to do it properly. So I think the new strategy um, obviously is to um, keep on willing to make the time to learn and be in touch with the, the already opening up and more intimate network. Um, yeah, no, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing concrete strategy, like no concrete strategy at the moment. Thank you, Felipe. Your festival is the next one beginning in uh, December, I think you mentioned it earlier. Yes. So do you yes. have any plans or new strategies or new ideas of how you deal with this situation right now? E, well, what may be not exactly related to festival cooperation or at least not with a international uh, like you. I mean, we are thinking of exchange programs with uh, some uh, festivals around the world with uh, some topics that we are interested in highlighting in our program. But beyond that, uh, we are working in the Ibero-American uh, network that, that I already mentioned, the Red Ibero Fest. And also in the market with, with the, the network that further developing the networks that we already established in the past two editions. But beyond that, I think we are trying to take advantage of the, the, the new uh, online, online platforms for, for uh, films that have uh, been developed by uh, people, uh, really smart people that, that did it in really short time in Colombia and in Latin America. I mean, there, there have been uh, there have been coming up uh, some two or three platforms that have become very strong uh, distributing, uh, well, screening on online and video on demand, uh, Latin American content, uh, Latin American films. Uh, and we are trying to work with them, uh, not only, I mean, not only like with one of them, but getting getting in into into di offering different content for each of them also uh, cultural institutions in colombia have also developed a, a platforms online platforms so we are we are trying to to work as if in 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 the physical uh, festival we have different venues right and you usually have a a, a, a different program or a different different uh, theme for each of the venues. So we are trying to work with that in the online environment, like uh, getting the the right content for the right platform according to the marketing they do, the audience they have, and that is based on what you've seen works with festivals that already happened online so we have we have seen how 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 uh, how is the how people use it what kind of people use it more and that is how we are going to approach it uh, getting that knowledge from past festivals uh, to to get to know the audience better and give them uh, what they want in the right platform that is what we are thinking now. It's not uh, already developed, uh, uh, completely developed, but uh, yeah, that's what we are thinking. Very interesting. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rimante. Your festival is in January, but you also have the Baltic Pitching Forum. Uh, it's, in, it's now, no, not now, in October, I think. It's in October, 8, uh, 10 October, yeah. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so we, well, uh, in the Baltic Pitching Forum, uh, every year we have new collaborations. And as I mentioned, we have established uh, collaborations with some partners who are like co-organizers of the event. So, yeah, it will be online. So I think we'll be kind of in contact, informal uh, contact with the, some colleagues partners who already did the online industry events so yeah and talking about the festival also like uh, regarding the programs uh, yeah we'll continue our collaborations with long-term uh, um, partners uh, who help um, help to program uh, short-term programs for kids for example and then we have kind of strategy to go to some new partners uh, who could uh, at least advise us on, on making a, sh a festival online and using uh, uh, online platforms. And we are kind of starting to talk with some VODs in Lithuania who, who will be our new partners uh, making uh, uh, we think that it will be hybrid the format of the festival. So we are kind of starting to talk uh, with new partners uh, in Lithuania doing, to do a hybrid uh, festival and, and showing them online. Thank you very much, um, Niels. Uh, your festival is in April next year again. Uh, one edition was already online. So I guess you can already learn from this um, and how changed uh, will the next issue, uh, edition be and uh, what are your new strategies uh, if you already have one? Well, yeah, uh, we actually do an extra or an extra and, and, and another event which is coming up in uh, only three weeks time, two weeks time. Yeah, so and it's, uh, it's a small festival. It's not going, going to be online, but in the cinema with all the restrictions uh, that are in place so we are very uh, hopeful that that we will reach the audience that we can fit into the the, the rooms there um, but yeah for next year um, well I think um, we will try to uh, continue with the collaborations that we have started in uh, recent times like I also wanted to mention that uh, some uh, initiatives have started right before the coronavirus but i think they are quite promising the the be short now initiative which uh, 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 stimulates a, a continuous discussion that that links different industry talks to each other and then uh, connecting the the film festivals and their industry programs to each other uh, so that not all the information is lost, but it will be, it is posted online. And I think this is something very interesting, uh, which we should have been doing uh, on our last edition. Uh, but this, this could very what, much, uh, very well work uh, in these times. And uh, I saw that uh, Glasgow is also working with Talking Shorts on a uh, uh, um, uh, film critic uh, workshop. Um, and these are collaborations also between festivals that I I hope that we can uh, in the future uh, collaborate more with. Uh, and then of course the, the European Short Film Network uh, that's, that we discussed uh, that I was talking about earlier. Um, yeah, the, the, the strategies or the, the ideas are very uh, ambitious and I really hope that we will get the funding to, uh, to create a uh, uh, not only shared film programming, which is part of the plans, but also uh, a uh, shared um, online program, um, which will combine uh, our festivals uh, in an, uh, a longer running online uh, uh, shared program. Um, yeah, and, and well, it, this, is, this might be a kind of an open invitation, but before Corona started, uh, I was talking to Anne from Dresden, and uh, we discovered that uh, we planned our festivals for next year on the same dates. So uh, if you're uh, listening, uh, Anna, <laughs> maybe we can uh, talk soon to uh, maybe see if we can make a similar combination like uh, 
shortwaves in Glasgow are doing now. And uh, I might be a very interesting uh, way to uh, combine our uh, our two festivals in a, in in to what extent possible. But I will uh, I will send her an email very soon. <laughs> Thank you, Niels. Is there another open call you want to share? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, no, no, no. That, that, right? that was the only one. I, the rest I will just uh, email directly. Super. Maybe all the others, you want to get some, uh, I don't know, festival partners. Here is the moment now. <laughs> Open invitations. I yes. I want I want to I want to say I want to ask uh, something. Is 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 what what strategies that we have uh, uh, we have taken uh, during this crisis are going to remain in the future? I mean, we are now connected like uh, three different continents online, but maybe in the future when we uh, um, uh, go back to um, normality. Uh, it's not going to be possible for someone from Argentina or Colombia to go to Indonesia or to go to uh, the Netherlands or, or, or Austria. But uh, how, how we can maintain some of the, the strategies? I mean, be open to, to organize industry events that are online, even having a, a physical edition to be able to get to some knowledge, experience, expertise that, that is in other parts of the world and, and stuff like that. And, and also, I want to be able to watch the programs, even if I'm not able to go to Vienna or, Li or Lithuania and, next year so maybe we can maintain some of those opportunities that were open during the pandemic for the future because i think that that only enrich our our practices so so we we need to be open about that and maybe we can discuss it in in, in a place like the short film conference yeah i guess that was a hymn for uh hybrid festivals <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's up to each festival, and but it seems like uh, Emilia and uh, Short Waves Festival and also Glasgow is doing quite well. So uh, let's hope for more hybrid festivals in the future and uh, also for, I don't know, sharing programs and uh, content with the industry all over the world, uh, at least that would be really nice. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, Let's stop this discussion here at this point. Uh, if you want to add something, now is the moment. Uh, if not, I think uh, I want to thank you. Thank you, dear panelists, for uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, taking your time for this uh, panel here. Um, and you, audience, keep on discussing gladly in the next upcoming days uh, at Short Waves Festival or Glasgow Short Film Festival. Enjoy the festivals uh, and the rest of it. And yeah, see you soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thanks. Good day. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you.